please stand? Jesus said, I am the resurrection and I am the life. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His compassion never fails. Every morning they are renewed. Jesus said, Let not your hearts believe in God. Believe also in me. I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, O oh Lord. If we live live to the Lord and if we die we die to the Lord so then whether we live or whether we die we are the Lord's and Christ died and live again that he might be Lord both of the dead the living we brought you nothing into the world and we take nothing out. The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The eternal God is our refuge and underneath are the everlasting arms. We stop life or in death. From whom can we seek help? From you alone, O Lord, who by your sins are justly anchored. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and mortal one, have mercy upon us. With faith in Jesus Christ, we receive the body of our sister Lucy Anita for burial. Our sister was washed in holy baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Let us therefore with confidence pray to God our Heavenly Father, the giver of life, that he will raise her to perfection in the company of the saints. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God of grace and glory, we remember before you this day our sister Lucy Anita. We thank you for giving her to us, her family and friends, to know and love as a companion on our earthly pilgrimage. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us faith to see in death the gate of eternal life, so that in quiet confidence we may continue our course on earth until by your call we are reunited with those who have gone before. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Kindly be seated for a tribute to be delivered by Mr. David Howard.
Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is David, and Lucy uh, was one of my dear aunts. And it was once said that death doesn't happen to life. Death is a part of life. And I'm at that cruel season of my own life where it's happening all too often. I have been asked to read a tribute that was written by a dear friend of hers, Hazel Campbell. Among the events of turbulent 70s was the advent of the Caribbean Examination Council. The then fledgling CXC facilitated the working together of people from various parts of the region and the wider world who were committed to its success. I can thank that organization for the introduction to Lucy. As an association that began as work colleagues, she from the Barbados headquarters and I from the office in Jamaica developed into a long-lasting friendship. My position as an assistant registrar who worked with the syllabus development panels took me to Barbados where I had to collaborate with Lucy on some of the related administrative matters. I knew much about being accommodated at the then Windsor Hotel, the Caribbean, and some other places less frequently used. To a newbie, Lucy was sociable and created a cordial atmosphere, which made the work less taxing. Lucy became a friend. After a while, my hotel stays were only to ensure that the arrangements were set for the on-time start of my meetings the next day. Thereafter, for the rest of each visit, I was accommodated at Lucy's home, where she had kindly invited me to stay. There, I became friends with Cynthia, with whom she shared a home at the time. The residence at Crusher Site Road was a place of happy memories as I learned more of Barbados and its culture. I turned the island visiting special place, I toured the island visiting special places of interest such as Harrison's Cave. We shared culinary skills and in those days goodies such as a variety of fruits could be brought from Jamaica. It was also at the Cushers residence site that the binge playing of Scrabble began. That is where Mother Howard, who played sometimes, named us the Nightbirds. We played game after game late into the night and when fatigue or good sense reminded us that work would start on time later that morning, we left the unfinished game where it was and picked up after work the next day. The formula extended to the Mount St. George. As that latter residence was under construction, I have claims of laying more than a few tiles under the direction of a skilled mutual friend from St. Kitts. Lucy was the epitome of kindness and hospitality. Many can attest to that, including two of my goddaughters, one who studied law and the other who worked as a journalist, and later my sister who was seconded to an insurance company for a while. Wherever they were staying, Lucy sought them out and showed some act of kindness. Many others from the wider Caribbean benefited from her caring disposition. She had friends or acquaintances in all places that facilitated other activities, for example, shopping in Puerto Rico. We were pleased to receive her on visits to Jamaica. She fitted in with all of the activities, including worship and whatever theatrical production was on at the time. Of course, the Scrabble playing continued. On her last visit, we were joined by my sister. We shared an interest in gardening and farming to which we elevated our, our efforts. Pretty often, I receive WhatsApp photos of produce reaped by Farmer Lucy. On my post-CXE visits, we tackled the nut grass on her farm and of course I knew all about the nu nuisances of African snails and the monkeys. We found time for a range of activities, all contributing to fitness, 
the line dance and the frequent morning visits to the sea, walking and crafts. And there were the cruises on which she loved to go. I had no interest there, and she chose to remain clueless about the lovely game of cricket in which I had often tried to interest her. Some of, a, some of us friends marvel that she did end up at a match in Queens Park Oval. Lucy worked in different ways to advance the work of the church, whether in the office of St. Matthias or on various special events that took place in each season. She touched many lives positively, taking on interests in their well-being, taking an interest in their well-being. Family was important to her, and she kept in touch with the members of Team Howard, wherever they were located. How painful it is to receive the news of the sudden passing of a dear friend. Shock, questions, and the range of emotions, a sobering reality. Pensiveness became the dominant mood. Reflections on the distant not, and not so distant past, memories of happy occasions, our sharings on subjects of history, politics, colleagueship, regional and international current affairs, humor, hobbies, individual concerns, mutual sharing of family and their joys and sorrows, games, getting to know each other's relatives, and widening our circles of friends. To say that Lucy will be greatly missed by a host of persons is an understatement. My prayer is that God's solace will be with her relatives and friends, and may the memories of her life and caring bring them lasting comfort from Hazel Campbell in Jamaica. Thank you. We will now have a tribute delivered by Cherry Griffith. Morning, church. I say morning and not a good morning, because if it were good, we would be here for some other joyous occasion. Unfortunately, this is not so. About two weeks ago, I was chatting with a work colleague, and I said to him that I was not looking forward to this day. He gave me that famous cliche, the Lord does not put more in a man than he can bear. Folks, I honestly want to tell you that I hope he didn't have so much confidence in me today. <laughs> There's a story about Lucy's birth, and I'm not sure that even her siblings knew about it, at least not from their parents. As the story goes, her children had seven children, with Lucy being the last. I'm not going to call their names, at least for the purpose of this story, but those of you who know them, well, you can work it out. As told by Lucy, after the first was born, they look at him and say, no, hey, too big, we need to go again. After the second was born, they said, no, too dark. We need to go again. After the third was born, they said, no, legs too bandy. And they went on and on until they got to Lucy, where they said, perfect. This is what we were trying for all along. Now we can stop. To hear Lucy tell this story, you would almost believe it is true. <laughs> there is something that I have observed over the years, which has always puzzled me. While attending the opening of the All-Stars Calypso tent with Lucy and her brother Earl, who was visiting just a few weeks ago, and incidentally, that was the last public function we attended together, that puzzle became crystallized in my mind. On that occasion, I heard the Calypsonian bumble sing about the dash and what it represents. When you look in the newspaper or on any headstone, you always see born on such and such a date dash, and then another day when that person died. How many of you have sat and recognized that that dash represents your life? I want to spend a few moments to talk about that dash as it related to Lucy's life. Lucy has always been one of loving, giving, and sharing all unconditionally. For us, her immediate family, we always felt loved 
appreciated, encouraged, and even empowered. She always found time to engage us and inquire about our well-being. This was extended to all her friends and our friends as well. She embraced them all. She always had a listening ear and was never judgmental. If she did not agree, she sought to find out the circumstances around which you viewed a situation as around why you viewed a situation as you did and try to look for a happy medium. She always avoided confrontation, but this did not mean that she was a pushover in any way. Lucy was a hard worker and put her all into everything she did. And I'm told that this very church was a recipient of her hard work. I remembered when she was employed full time, it was not uncommon for her to leave home early on mornings, never to return until very late at night. After the retirement, she worked part time at the St. Matthias Church where this hard work and dedication continued until she fully retired. After that, she went about her gardening in which she put the same passion, zeal, and energy. Due to her attention to detail, she, always, she was always sought out and became involved in numerous activities, whether the functions were being, sorry, whenever functions were being held, whether it be a family function, church function, a beach line, an event put on by one of her line dancing groups, she was always there with her homemade juices and other concoctions for which I was often the guinea pig. <laughs> Lucy always said that she wanted to retire young enough to enjoy life, and so she did. It was always her desire to retire at age 50, but she went one year longer. About a year or so before Lucy actually retired, a few benefits were accorded to senior staff at CXC. I tried my level best to convince her to stay on for a few more years. She said, and I quote, Jerry, I have said to you over and over and over again, I always wanted to retire young enough to enjoy life. I am going to die young, so I want to enjoy as much as I can before the good Lord calls me home. There are things I would like to do that I would not be able to do while I'm employed. Friends, family, you all know that Lucy had a passion for traveling and cruising. I think um, since she retired, I counted about 13 cruises she went to, and not just the Caribbean, Mediterranean, Alaska, all over. The further away it was, no second invitation was needed. She traveled to South Africa to attend the wedding of one of her godchildren. I never knew her to be a netball player of any repute. As a matter of fact, I didn't even know she could hold a ball, but she was part of a senior group that traveled to Singapore to play netball. They even got into the semifinals, thanks to some established players in that team. It was always a dream of mine to go on a European coach tour. I went about planning my trip and inadvertently did not mention it to Lucy. One night after much research and consultation with friends from Europe, I left some information about my proposed trip on the desk next to her computer and went to bed. Pooh. About 2.30 in the morning, my bedroom door flew open and there was Lucy, as Bajans would say, with hands akimbo. Young man, how can you be planning to go on a tour without me? I have looked through the information you left on the desk and there are some things that I added, but since you did not invite me, I invited myself. I added some things that might be of interest. My credit card is there. So when finalizing your trip, don't let it be a noise. Book me as well, because I in that. <laughs> the time came and we went off. Lucy's home was open to all and sundry. Quite often there would be some friend or a friend of a friend that might be passing through Barbados and wanted somewhere to overnight or spend a few days. They were always welcome. There were people from all over the Caribbean and occasionally from further afield. She would find time to take them around to show off Barbados and some of its places of interest. Lucy had many interests and was very creative. You, she only had to look at something and if she liked it, she set about to make it. <laughs> Should one visit her home, there's much evidence of this. 
She had a passion for craft. Dear, you will find many things done by her own hands. Cheers, pottery, jewelry, and much clothing in various stages of completion. Quite often, she made her own clothes. From her working days at CXC, she had many friends in Trinidad, some of whom are here today. Whenever she visited Trinidad, she always brought back pieces of material and would often give them to people who she taught who she thought of while there and figured that the material suited them. Family and friends, we are here to mourn the loss of Lucy while at the same time we are celebrating her life. Lucy accomplished most, if not all, of what she wanted to achieve in life. For Lucy, that dash was well lived and we can all take comfort from that. I am sure that she would love to be remembered for her effervescent personality, always ready and willing to assist in any which way she can. I implore each and every one of you here today, like Lucy, make that dash count. May she rest in peace. We will now have a solo rendered by Kian Brown. Morning to everyone. Condolences to the family. Just know that she's safe in the arms of her father. Steam, earth and heaven will pass away. It's not a dream, God will make all things new that day. Gone is the curse from where I stumbled and fell. Never crying again, and the praises to the great I am. We believe in the light of the reason. all around now the nations they bow down to sing the only sound is the praises to Christ our King and slowly the names from the book are read well,
kindly stand as we sing the hymn number 418 i'm pressing on the upward way Almighty God, we remember before you today your servant, Lucy Anita, and we pray that, having opened to her the gates of larger life, you will receive her more and more into your joyful service, that, with all who have served you in the past, she may share in the eternal victory of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Kindly be seated for the first scripture reading. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 15, verses 50 to 58. What I am saying, brothers and sisters, is this. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Listen, I will tell you a mystery. We will not all die, but we will be all changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable and we will be changed. For this perishable body must put on imperishability, and this mortal body must put on immortality. When this perishable body puts on imperishability, 
and this mortal body puts on mort immortality. Then the saying that is written will be fulfilled. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved, be steadfast, immovable, always excelling in the work of the Lord, because you know that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. This is the word of the Lord. Kindly remain seated for the second scripture reading to be read by Mr. Philip Howard. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 12, verses 35 through 40. Be dressed for action and have your lamps lit. Be like those who are waiting for their master to return from the wedding banquet so that they may open the door for him as soon as he comes and knocks. Blessed are those slaves whom the master finds alert when he comes. Truly, I tell you, he will fasten his belt and have them sit down and to eat. He will come and serve them. If he comes during the middle of the night or near dawn and finds them so, blessed are those slaves. But know this, if the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. The word of the Lord. Kindly stand as we sing the hymn at number 689. In our day of thanksgiving, one psalm let us offer.
thanks for those we love but see no more. And especially at this time, we remember Lucy, our sister, family member, fellow pilgrim on this journey of life. We cherish our memories and give thanks to you for the person that she was, a child of God, a saint of the church. Amen. Please be seated. I speak to you in the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Psalm number 116 and the 15th verse. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. It was just a few short days ago that I returned home from the Coral Ridge Chapel where I had conducted a service. And I was met on the patio by my wife who said to me, I have something to tell you, but I want you to sit down first. Now when you hear those words, you know only bad news is following. So I prepared to hear uncomfortable news about some of the older members of our family. But Lucy? Lucy went swimming and walking almost every day. She worked in her garden until noon almost as often. Lucy loved dancing, and there was hardly a week that she did not attend a dance class or a dance event somewhere. Lucy watched what she ate, except for coconut bread. So it just did not make sense to me for someone who looked after themselves so well to have died in the way that she did. Surely we can only but remember the words of the burial service in our book. And I quote, in the midst of life we are in death. To whom then can we turn for help but to you, O Lord? Those of the St. Matthias Posse who are present, and I see there are quite a few of them, will remember one Cortez Linton of blessed memory. Cortez and I had a collection and a selection of names for Lucy. We referred to her and called her to her face as loving Lucy, lovely Lucy, and more especially luscious Lucy. Of course, all these names would simply roll off Lucy's back and she would say something like, why don't you stop talking foolishness? <laughs> After she took early retirement, Lucy became the parish secretary at St. Matthias and remained in that position for about 10 years. But she was more than a secretary. She was a Eucharistic minister, a lector, she assisted with counting the offerings on Sunday. She was a member of the fundraising committee and the secretary treasurer of the annual fair. And I am only calling the official positions. But I have to share with you now that Lucy has some interesting quirks. Like one I used to call disappearing down a rabbit hole. Every once in a while, Lucy would disappear. Let me give you an example. One morning I came into work, sat at my desk, and I said to Lucy, um, I'd like you to prepare this letter to send to the bishop. And she said, okay. She took the letter from me, and she went back to the desk. And uh, half an hour went by, and I didn't see any Lucy. And three quarters of an hour went by, and I got up from my desk, and I went outside, and I saw Lucy sitting in the office. I said, so Lucy, what about the letter for the bishop? Oh, shucks. You know what happened? I went down to the door to get something off the, the notice board. And on my way back up, I saw some vessels left on the altar by the altar servers. So I brought them inside. I washed them out. I put them in the safe. And just as I was going back to my desk, the telephone rang and the church warden wanted to know something about the funeral. And I spoke to him and then he asked me to look for something else in the desk. So I said, so Lucy, what about the... 
correspondence. Oh yes, I'm going to get to that. But she had a way of starting something and then going off here, there, and everywhere. As I used to call it, going down a rabbit hole. <clears throat> Lucy was also a collector. She liked to keep stuff and things. And if you ever go to Lucy's house, you will see stuff and things. And when you ask her about them, she will say, well, you know, you never know when you know, there will be a use for them. But almost certainly there was, seemed to be never a use for them. So when her family came in from over and away, some of them were brave enough to start disposing of these stuff and things, right? But I tell you, by the time the airplane took off from Grant the Adams, Lucy was back collecting the same stuff and things. When I decided to take early retirement in 2014, the first person at the church I told was my parish secretary, Lucy. And her response was, don't tell anyone, but I will be right behind you. For a while, she continued at St. Matthias, but twice a month or so, she would visit other churches. I think it is fair to say this morning that St. Matthias's loss was St. George's gain. And she became as much a part of this congregation as she had been at St. Matthias. Now, my brothers and sisters, I want to be honest with you. If you ask any priest, minister, or pastor, and they are honest, they will tell you that when they move from one church to another, there are some people who you are glad to leave behind you. just as no doubt there are members in that congregation who are glad to see you go. But I have to tell you that it was not so with Lucy and I. After we retired, we called each other regularly. We saw each other. And there were many a day that I would go up to the mount and we would go through Lucy's garden and she would show me what she had and I would pull a, a fig there or I would pull some... Uh, uh, some thyme or some kale from somewhere else. And after a long tour of the garden, we would sit in the kitchen. I would have a, a coconut water. And Lucy would make some kind of stuff, green stuff in a bottle. And do, and do some kind of, what do you call those things again? Uh, uh, things that you mix up? Yes. And, but it was always green and thick. Perhaps the last time Lucy and I met in person was a few couple of weeks before she passed. We were talking on the telephone and she told me that there was a plantation nearby that was selling out yams and potatoes. And she said, well, I'm going to pass by you soon. And she went and she bought 10 pounds of potatoes and 10 pounds of yams for us at home. She brought them down. And when she came, she, she exchanged her potatoes and yams and I gave her two hands of bananas from my plantation. <laughs> There are only two banana trees on my plantation. <laughs> Lovely Lucy, lively Lucy, luscious Lucy. She had her principles and lived by them. A Christian woman who lived her life quietly and with dignity while doing what she could to help others. Precious in the sight of the Lord, is the death of his saints. But let me, my friends, make it abundantly clear that the psalmist is not talking about the pious plaster posters with halos above their heads that we sometimes see in religious places and spaces. We know that in the New Testament, the baptized members of the church were referred to as saints. Here are the words of St. Paul as he writes to the early church. Romans chapter 1 and verse 7, to all who are beloved of God in Rome called to be saints. To the church in God in Corinth, saints by calling. And in Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 1, to the saints who are at Ephesus. Every Christian is a saint in the eyes of God. 
Our sister was a saint not because she lived a perfect life, but because she believed in Jesus and sought to follow her Lord's commandment. Thou shalt love the Lord of thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul, and you finish it, and thy neighbor as thyself. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Now we can think about the death of Christians from different points of view. We can look at it from the point of view of this congregation, which has had the benefit of someone who prayed for spiritual blessings, who contributed in her own way to the fellowship and was indeed a blessing to those who would have known her. Or we can look at the death of a believer from his or her experience. For Lucy and for others who are coming to make their transition, it will be a home going. It will be a reunion with those who have gone before. It will be the end of the wilderness experience. The death of a saint is precious in the sight of the Lord because it will be the moment when he will bring them into his nearer presence. I was pleasantly surprised to see one of Lucy's favorite hymns in the program for this morning. We sang it a short while ago, and I want you now to turn to the one we sang just before this homily and read it with me as a tribute, our own individual tribute, as we think of our sister Lucy. On page number six, 689. In our day of thanksgiving, one psalm let us offer for the saints who before us have found their reward. When the shadow of death fell upon them, we sorrowed, but now we rejoice that they rest in the Lord. Via con Deus, Lucy. Go with God until we meet again. Amen and amen. Let us now stand as we confess our beliefs in Almighty God in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. For our sister Lucy Anita, let us pray to the Lord Christ who said, I am resurrection and I am life. Your response after each petition is, Hear us, Lord. Lord, you confess sold Martha and Mary in their distress. Draw near to us who mourn for Lucy and Anita and dry the tears of those who weep. You wept at the grave of Lazarus, your friend. Comfort us in our sorrow. You raised the dead to life. Raise our sister to eternal life. You promised paradise to the thief who repented. Bring our sister to the joys of heaven. Yes, our sister was washed in baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Give her fellowship with all your saints. Yes, 
She was nourished with your body and blood. Grant her a place at the table in your heavenly kingdom. Comfort us in our sorrows at the death of our sister. Let our faith be our consolation and eternal life our hope. Amen. We will now sing the hymn number 522, I am thine, O Lord. This will be followed by the commendation.
Give rest, O Christ, to your servant with your saints. You only are immortal, the creator and maker of mankind, and we are mortal, formed of the earth, and to earth shall we return. For so did you ordain when you created me, saying, You are dust, and to dust you shall return. All of us go down to the dust, yet even at the grave we make our song. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Let us commend our sister Lucy Anita to the mercy of God our Maker and Redeemer. Deliver your servant Lucy, O Sovereign Lord Christ, from all evil, and set her free from every bond that she may rest with all your saints in the eternal habitations, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, one God, forever and ever. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant Lucy. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy, in the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. We will now sing the hymn number 515, Come We That Love the Lord, and this will be followed by the Nunc Dimittis.
for they take with them the record of their deeds. Man born of a woman has but a short time to live. Like a flower he blossoms and then withers, like a shadow he flees and never stays. In the midst of life we are in death. To whom can we turn for help but to you, Lord, who are justly angered by our sins? Lord God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, holy and most merciful Savior, deliver us from the bitter pains of eternal death. You know the secrets of our hearts. In your mercy hear our prayer. Forgive us our sins and at our last hour let us not fall away from you. Ensure and certain hope of resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ. We commend to Almighty God our sister Lucy Anita and we commit her body to the elements, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. And we beseech you in your infinite goodness to give us grace to live in your dear love and to die in your favor. But when your well-beloved Son shall come again in judgment, both this our sister Lucy and we ourselves may be found acceptable in your sight. Grant this for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Rest eternal grant unto her, O Lord. May she rest in peace, rise in glory. opportunity on behalf of Rev. Reverend Lisa Jessamy Maynard, myself and the rest of the church family here at St. George Parish Church to offer sincerest condolences to the family, friends, and relatives of Sister Lucy. 
I also do so on behalf of our rector, Senator the Reverend Canon Dr. John Rogers, who regrets that he could not be here today. from the dead trampling down death by death and giving life to those in the tomb the son of righteousness is gloriously risen giving light to those who sat in darkness and in the shadow of death guide our feet into the way of peace having taken away the sin of the world Christ will open the kingdom of heaven to all who believe in his name saying come O blessed of my father inherit the kingdom prepared for you into paradise May the angels lead you. At your coming, may the martyrs receive you and bring you into the holy city, Jerusalem. 